I help you? Um, I have a reservation for Robin Firth. Mr Firth, that's right. Would you please sign the register and include your car registration number? Your office settled your account when your secretary made the booking, but left the tally open should you need any extras. That sounds tempting. Your room is on the first floor, number 19. The stairs are just round this corner. Here's your key. Thanks. Would you like to book a time for dinner? We serve between 7 and 9. Um, 8 o'clock would be great. That's fine. Have a good evening, sir. Okay, thanks. Good evening, sir. You must be Mr. Hopwood. Welcome to the Pinewoods Hotel. You recognise me? But I've never stayed here before. I'm not that psychic. It's simply that you are one of the last of our guests with a reservation. Have you had a good journey? Oh, it's been a tiring day. I must be getting too old for all this motoring. Even with a sat-nav, I seem to spend too much time sitting in queues. Would you be kind enough to sign the register and let us know your car registration number? You can settle your bill in the morning. Before you leave, can I open your account by swiping your card? Oh. If I can find it amongst all these. Ah, there we are. What time are they serving dinner? Between seven and nine. Would you like to book a time? Oh, the earlier the better for me. I never can eat late. What about seven o'clock? No problem, that's book, sir. Your room is number 20. Here's your key. It's on the second floor. Sorry there's no lift. Enjoy your evening, sir. Thank you. Nothing satisfactory, sir? Yeah, it was great, thanks. Would you like to finish off with a coffee? Yeah, no, I'll have a drink at the bar. Good evening, sir. What can I get you? Uh, can I get a pint of Tetley's and can you put that on room 19? Yeah. It's quite in tonight. There's no conferences here this week. Since they built that new convention centre, business has never been better. We're fully booked up for the National WI conference next week, and in three weeks' time, the Lib Dems are here. It's good news for the resort, and it's good news for us. Business has never been better. Life turn around. That's, that's good to hear. Anyway, thanks for the pint. Seems like we're the only two paying guests around here. Do you mind? By all means. <sighs> Steve Hopwood. <laughs> Robin Firth. I couldn't help overhearing the barman. It's a good job we're not in here next week. The WI. I never can remember the words to Jerusalem. <laughs> but their jam's pretty good. The wife and I, we live in a fair sized village, but uh, there's a women's institution there, but she never joined. What line of work are you in? On the road, like me? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Electronics. Um, we're doing pretty well considering the recession. I've got a car full of boxes of perfume samples, but the internet's taking over. Customers can order online without you going around knocking on their doors at inconvenient times. Yeah. You have to be pushy in this business or you get nowhere. Well, with electronics, they like to see face to face they actually want you you know face to face well you're very lucky you said you were married yeah would have thought you'd still be playing the field a young fellow like you especially in this business you know things happen don't they but, true you know actually i've got a picture of my kids here oh good like to see that uh, Beth, his name's neil it's great what you can do with these cameras isn't it yeah 
I bought him a big load of Lego and he just first to play with the box. That's kids. kids, tell me about them. Yeah. yeah. You know, even with all this travelling, I always make sure I'm home on a Sunday for the Formula One Grand Prix. Wouldn't miss that for the world. Refill, gents. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, thanks. I know you can always record it, but it's not the same. You say you're into Formula One. I love Formula One. I went to Monaco Circuit. They opened it the day before the qualifier for the general public, and I got to walk around the circuit. Every ordinary day road, as you know. <laughs> I can top that. The brother-in-law got a couple of tickets for the British Grand Prix. We had a great day out at Silverstone and it didn't rain. Do you know, I've just finished reading a book on the history of Formula One. You can borrow it if you like and let me have it back after breakfast. Yeah, that'd be great. I find it hard to sleep in strange beds, strange hotels, all that kind of thing. I'll go now. The second floor. Room 20. Had a lift in this place. I'm not as fit as I thought I was. There you go. One for the road? No thanks, Robin. I'm off to bed. See you in the morning. Well, thanks again. At breakfast. I'll see you at breakfast. Chance for you to finish early? Yes. Good night, sir. The office, and I've been trying to get you all evening. Well, I left the phone in the room and I've just been over for dinner. Okay, look, we've got a late order from Central Electronics and they need to talk to you about the performance of some of the kit pretty quickly. I want you to make Central your first call in the morning about quarter past eight. They were pushing me, so I had to go for that. Can you can you manage that? Yeah, sure, no, no problem. Uh, Depot's only about 40 minutes away from here. I can squeeze in a quick breakfast before I go. Oh, that's great stuff, Robin. You're a star. See you back here on Friday. Yeah, okay, no worries. No problem. Okay, see you. Bye. Steve, um, I was after Steve. He, I was gonna then return this book back. Oh. But um, oh, there's, yeah, he must have the wrong room. There's no Steve here. What is it, Murray? Well, this gentleman wants to return this book, but it's not ours, is it? What name did you say? Steve Hopwood. Uh, we had a drink last night, and he said it was room twenty. No, we've been here since Monday. You must have misheard him. Uh, well, I'll check with management, but. I'm sorry to cause you the trouble. Okay. Oh, good morning, sir. You'll be wanting an early breakfast. No, at this moment in time. I borrowed this book off of Steve Hopwood. New room 20. Steve Hopwood? Yeah, he uh, wrote his... I'm afraid there's no Mr. Hopwood staying here. <laughs> he wrote his... Number on a beer. Room twenty. Yeah, we had a drink in the bar. I don't think you've told me. Well, the trip, really. can I just say, Mr. Firth, I'm not in the habit of telling lies. We're very well organised here. Mr. and Mrs. Ross are in room twenty. Mr. Hopwood, the name means nothing at all. If you'd like to come round to reception, I'll show you the signing in book. Right, Mr. Firth, I think we've got the answer here. Mr. and Mrs. Ross signed in. Yeah. You signed in. 
There's no Mr. Hopwood in this book at all. Good morning, Mr. Hughes. Sorry I'm a bit late. That's quite all right. Now, perhaps you can answer a question, Debbie. Uh, Mr. Firth here insists that a Mr. Steve Hopwood stayed at this hotel in room 20 last night. Not yesterday. I've been on duty all week. We had a drink last night in the bar. The barman would have seen us both. I'm not a liar. The barman is off duty today, Mr. Firth. Well, that's convenient, isn't it? Real convenient. Well, I've got to go and see clients, so I can't hang around here all day. Good. This isn't going to be less of this. Mr. Firth, after you've had your breakfast, can you please return your key? What are you doing here? What am I doing here? I know that you know about Steve Hotwood. And I'm not going to leave until I find out. People just don't disappear and reappear like magic or something. If you don't say something, I'm going to go to the police. I'm not going to settle until I know the truth. And they will believe your far-fetched far -fetched story? I don't think so. <laughs> Look, Mr Firth, the manager will be back soon. He's only gone down to the bank to pay him some cheques. I can't speak to you here. I finished my shift in an hour. Meet me at the cafe across from the supermarket. But please, make yourself scarce. to Nigeria and caught what the doctors thought was, in, was malaria, an unpleasant disease but treatable. On Wednesday night he ran reception just after midnight as he was feeling seriously unwell. When paramedics arrived, he was unconscious and the decision was made to take him to the isolation ward of the infirmary. It seems he died soon after arriving there. I mean, he did say he was tired at the bar but I don't think he was ill. I don't think it was that serious. It turns out it wasn't malaria after all, but some kind of infectious tropical disease. When the authorities informed us of that on early Thursday morning, I was called in and set to work cleaning and disinfecting the room 20. It was a busy night. I managed an hour or so sleep. No wonder I was late for my shift. Fortunately, there were so few guests. No one else was disturbed that night. So you met Mr and Mrs Ross, who were brought in to cover our tracks. Appropriate expression. Don't you think this conspiracy was a bit overkill? Not at all. If anyone else had found out about the illness and its dangers, our hotel would stay empty and in time have to close. Just when business was on the up. As it was, the authorities were on our side. They had a lot to lose as well. Mr. Firth, this must stay our secret. Please don't read the word of this to anyone. Too many jobs and too many people's lives are at stake. I can't stay any longer. I must get home. Goodbye.
Fabregas had it by all once more. Reina came off his line. Alonso just beat Fabregas to the punch. And as far as Flamini survives the handball appeals. Fabregas and Schlepp combine. Lovely football. Going out now. I'll be back about five. Don't be late. Elizabeth and Dave are here for seven. Okay. Bye. Bye. No, I'm Mrs. Hotwood's sister. Her husband died suddenly earlier this week and she's very upset. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I borrowed a book off her, Stephen, and I uh, was hoping she was in so I could return it. Well, I can pass it on to her. Um, you said you were you saw Stephen. Um, when would that have been? Um, well, that was Wednesday night. We had a drink at a hotel. Wednesday night? Yeah. That was the night he died. Um, the hospital rang my sister to say that he'd been taken ill, but by the time uh, she arrived at the hospital, he was already dead. A massive heart attack, they told her. Um, she was absolutely devastated, so they asked me to come. Well, I mean, when I met Steve, he was a really nice guy. It felt like I knew him all my life, really. Uh, give my condolences to your sister and... I, I, I'm sorry for her loss and everything. I will do. I'll, I'll tell her that you called and thank you for taking the time and trouble to pass this back to us. Okay. That's no problem. Okay. See you.